Suppose price is equal to expected price equal to 100. To draw the economy at a long run equilibrium in the aggregate demand aggregate supply analysis based on this expected price level, suppose further that the public employs simple adaptive expectations when informing price expectations. The first part of the question is, suppose next month the RBA decides to increase interest rates out of a concern that the current low interest rate is producing a housing price bubble. What action would the RBA take to address this issue? So, our target is for the central bank, Reserve Bank of Australia, is to increase interest rate. So they will go through something called open market operation and under open market operation they will do something called open market sale. They will sell treasury bonds, consequently they will collect money from the public, therefore money supply will decrease and interest rate will be higher. The second part of the question. Show graphically the short-run impact of the RPA's action according to the aggregate demand aggregate supply model. We'll start by drawing our y-axis which is the price, our x-axis which is our output, this is our upward aggregate supply curve, and this is our downward aggregate demand curve, and in the point of the intersection we'll draw our long-run aggregate supply curve. And all curves intersect at the same point which is point A, that's why we have our equilibrium price which is P1, and equilibrium output which is called our potential output Y star or Y1. Because we have a higher interest, this would result in a lower investment because of the crowding out effect. Consequently, our aggregate demand will be lower, which means aggregate demand will shift to the left. Therefore, we're going to shift aggregate demand to the left to aggregate demand 2. We will have a new point of intersection between aggregate demand 2 and aggregate supply, which is point B. This will give us Y2, which is lower than Y1 or Y star, and P2, which is lower than P1. The third part of the question. Continue with the long-run adjustment of the economy. So in the long run, what will happen? We know that B2 is lower than B1, so we have lower price. And Y2 is lower than Y1 or Y star, which is our potential output or full employment output. Consequently, we will have a lower output. Therefore, it will result in a higher unemployment. Because of higher employment, nominal wages will decrease. Therefore, this will give a motive to producers to increase their production. Consequently, aggregate supply will shift to the right. So, aggregate supply will shift to the right. To which point? So, what will happen is, at B2, this will be our new expected price. Consequently, our aggregate supply will go through B2 and Y1, or Y star. So, if you draw it here, it will give you this green point. So, I know that aggregate supply will shift to this point. This means that we will have a new point of intersection between aggregate demand 2 and aggregate supply 2, which is this point. This will give us a lower price at B3 and a higher output at Y3. We still have a lower price, so this means that our nominal wage will decrease and real wage will remain constant. Therefore, we know that B3 is lower than B2 is lower than B1 and Y3 is bigger than Y2 but lower than Y1 which is our Y star. Still, we didn't reach our long run equilibrium. Why? Because aggregate demand 2 doesn't intersect with aggregate supply and long-run aggregate supply at the same point. Consequently, what will happen is we will keep repeating the same process again. We will shift aggregate supply again to B3 and Y star or Y1. And then we'll have a new equilibrium price and new equilibrium quantity. It's still we didn't reach long-run equilibrium, so aggregate supply will shift to the right again and again and again. So we will keep repeating this process until our aggregate supply will intersect with aggregate demand 2 at Y star. Consequently, our price is equivalent to our long run price and our output will be equal to our potential output which is Y star, which is Y1. Therefore, what will happen is I would like to reach a point C. This will be our long run equilibrium. But aggregate supply 2 will not reach this point immediately. It will keep shifting a couple of times. Therefore, we will draw these two dashes which means it will keep shifting in the future and then we will reach our long run aggregate supply shift. This will give us the price in the long run which is lower than price 3, which is lower than price 2, which is lower than price 1, and we reach our full employment output or potential output Y star or Y1. The next part of the question. Discuss the short and long run consequences of the RBA action and why they take place. So in the short run, what happened? We know that our price will go down. Our output will go down. Consequently, if price go down, inflation will go down. If output go down, our unemployment will be higher. But what, what about the long run? In the long run, we have a lower price. 
what will be the impact on our output? We know that in the long run, we we'll reach our full employment output, our potential output. The full output will remain constant at Y star. Then we have lower inflation. What will happen to our unemployment rate? We know that in the long run, we will reach our natural rate of unemployment, which is Y star. So this means that prices will not affect output and natural rate of unemployment.